Hello and welcome to the Plone Newsroom, a podcast about what's new in the world of Plone. If you don't know that, Plone is a open source content management system written in Python by a great community that we are a part of. Uh, this is our second episode, uh, recorded two weeks before the yearly Plone conference. And you're listening to uh, Philip Bauer, that's me, and my co-host is Fred van Dijk. Yeah. Hi, Philip. Welcome back. So this is the second episode. Um this month's features, of course, uh, it's two weeks uh, in advance of the Plone Conference, so we're uh, going to talk, of course, about PloneConf. Uh, next, our second feature is we'll discuss the state of Plone 6 development, how far are we with alphas, pre-alphas, what has been uh, going on and what still might have to be done. And we'll wrap up with some other news, interesting add-ons, and we'll get back to some things we, uh, we already did in our first episode. That is so, true. But first, let's. Uh, what have you been up to this month? You've been on holiday, haven't you? I've been on vacation. Yeah. So uh, we we last, uh, so we don't have kids, so it's it's easier to just postpone. So we postponed our vacation and said, okay, let's see what's happening in September. We did a last, well, not really a, a booking, but we just found a nice, very nice apartment in Tuscany, and we were also very lucky with the weather. So we we were there like six years ago, and we uh, uh, decided then not to go to Florence because we would probably need two or three days for Florence. And that was uh, this was our kind of revenge on that promise. Uh, uh, so we went back to Tuscany. Uh, we had an apartment in the Valdarno Valley between uh, Florence and Arezzo, and we took the train two days uh, to to a small. We we went to a small village, took the train, and within 40 minutes we were right inside uh, Florence, which was really, really, really nice. That sounds great. I had holidays in Florence a couple of years back with the kids, which was really good. Um, we uh, I didn't do anything. I was working all the time because the Plone newsroom is so successful <laughs> that I got so many new projects that I was working 25 hours each day. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so no, no, no exciting news from me, actually. You, you, you so, can brag after episode five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, by the way, uh, thanks for all the positive feedback and the uh, interesting uh, suggestions for topics. Uh, we'll definitely... Um, yeah, do everything that you ask us to do. Um, so let's start with the uh, feature, obviously the Plon Conference. Um, you might have seen, uh, since this is also a YouTube uh, video, you see uh, Fred and I, we uh, picked out some of our conference t-shirts. Which ones you, are you wearing? Yeah, so I had to. Uh, I have this this huge. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, but it's, it's a bit mixed also with with local conferences and and Python meetups we've had in the Netherlands. But this is my. But the 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 only remaining oldest shirt I have from the Python uh, uh, conference in two thousand nine in Budapest, which was so. Actually, we we talked about it a bit beforehand. My first conference was two thousand four Vienna. I was still working at Merklin, uh, but I was You're really ancient. I, I was. Yeah, we discussed the. I'm getting, I'm, I'm graying. So uh, I was, I was in 2004. The first conference was Vienna for me, uh, but no T-shirts remain from that in my wardrobe. I can't find anything. And this was the first real one where I also started working for Zest and doing blown stuff full time. So that was my my first conference, not as a as an end user, but also as a bit of a developer integrator. And I was just wowed by everything. And the, the main the main thing I remember from that conference, Budapest was great. Of course, you've got Buda and you've got Pest, uh, uh, two cities. Uh, uh, grown together uh, uh, near to the to the Danube, Donau. But what I remember most is that the, the, we had a huge conference room at the university, yeah. uh, but the Wi-Fi went down all the time. And we didn't know it at first until we realized that the, I think the the, the the electronics research center was neck in the in the in the room next to this huge conference room where they had a huge setup with magnets. Oh, so God. they had some Tesla coils or other stuff, and when they started experimenting, the, the Wi-Fi went down in our conference. Oh, God. I, I remember uh, weird things about that conference. Yeah, my first conference was um, Washington, actually. I missed all the older ones. Um, this uh, T-shirt is from San Francisco, a uh, glorious conference. And if you if you listen to the... Uh, the um, podcast by uh, Kim, where he interviewed um, Matthew Wilkes, uh, he, he's telling weird stories about that conference and what happened there. That is uh, certainly uh, worth checking out. Um, I, I have the, your T-shirt is actually my favorite T-shirt. It's hands down the most beautiful uh, Plone Conference T-shirt ever. There are a couple really nice ones. So the, the, the 
crazy thing is this yeah, is... Yeah, that was also... I had it on my long list, but I, I, I dropped it. Uh, it, it but Ferrara it's, it's, it is, is not, great. It's not the best, certainly uh, design-wise, but it's the last, and it's 2019. How sad is that? We haven't had conference T-shirts for two years now, and we're not having one this year and last year. So I'm very much looking forward to 2022, and who, who's ever go, going to organize the conference better do a really good job about the T-shirt. We've got two weeks left, Philip. We've got two weeks left. Shouldn't we organize a, 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 an online T-shirt print? Um, get physical T-shirts um, for the online conference. I'm, I'm, getting, I'm, I'm, I'm panicking if you ask me <laughs> to do anything before the conference, because I have to give two talks, uh, prepare the training, and organize yeah, yeah. You're uh, fully lots booked of stuff. Again. You did it, yeah, but horrible. you did it to yourself again. I, I, yeah. try to, I try to not do anything, but I was tempted yesterday. Uh, uh, but we'll get to that. So, yeah. Plone Conference, what does it mean? We've got trainings beforehand, two days, when we start uh, Saturday, I think. Then we've got talks and keynotes for two or three days. Then we three get days. Op open spaces, which kind of blend no, in five after. Days. Five days of yeah, five talks, days. actually. Yeah. Because and we only have a, blend in. yeah, we have the, the the time slot issue obviously because the plant community is spread over the whole globe. We can't do an eight hour conference because half of the attendees would be asleep by that time. Yeah, yeah. So we have four hour slots uh, each day. I really like that um, the last uh, because the plone cons are normally really exhausting if you're there in person uh, the whole day you get up early you go to bed late with the online uh, version having only four hours in the evening for us Europeans but then of course uh, uh, or uh, yeah early evening and, and then it's it's a bit nicer that you now have like three and a half four hours uh, each day but it really we can we can now fully fill the uh, 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 the five days of uh, of conference talks and then open spaces Philip yep. open Open spaces quickly. Um, yeah, what are I, they? I, I got volunteered to organize the open spaces. Actually, um, still mm. have to figure out how to do that. So, open spaces are self-organizing of the uh, uh, conference attendees, where they discuss uh, what is what what they're most interested in. So, there's they're not pre-prepared. So, there's going to be a document where you jot down. Uh, what you want to discuss and uh, what the topic is, and people can just go in. Uh, th so there's uh, the concept that you're, if it's just boring, you can just go out and uh, watch some some other open space. And there, uh, that since we're not having le these whole uh, hallway yeah, tracks, that's the, um, that's the second best th thing then. Uh, the next best. Yeah, we'll, next, we'll see how that goes. So then, and then yeah. after the uh, after the the main conference, there are still two days of sprinting. Um, yeah. And after, I, I need to yeah. about the, about the trainings. Uh, just yeah. a quick thing. Uh, so there's two days. Saturday and Sunday are trainings. Usually they're mm -hmm. Monday and Tuesday. And this uh, this year uh, it's Saturday and Sunday for four hours each. And we have three completely new trainings. I'm super excited about them. So there's going to be finally, hopefully, not only a training but also the documentation for uh, the official recommended way to deploy Volto with uh, alongside the Plone backend. Uh, Erico is doing that, and uh, together with um, with Victor, he uh, I heard yesterday that they're still developing it. So. And they redid everything yesterday, something like that. So I'm really <laughs> excited about that. And there's going to be a uh, another new, very new thing since Plone 6 has a classic uh, theme as well, aside uh, on the other uh, on the other front from Volto. Uh, and there is going to be a training on UI theming for Plone 6 Classic because that is bootstrap based, they use this NPM package for the theme, and there's a lot of nice, interesting new opportunities. And finally, there will be documentation and a training on that part. And also, which what is also really good, uh, David Bain is gonna do a uh, site editor training for Volto. So getting started with your Plone site as an as a, as a editor mostly, um, but using the new user interface, that is also, these are the three really, really new trainings and I'm excited that they happen. Yeah. And of course there are other trainings that have been running for a while. So to, to, to quickly explain how we do this training stuff, we 
started those trainings somewhere in 2010, 12, 11, 12 already with Plancoms. There have always been some kind of training, but we kind of institutionalized them into the community by 2013, 14. And you're, you're to blame, I think, Philip, with the Mastering Plon training, which you kindly donated uh, from an in-company training uh, to, the, to the community. And we kind of fixed, fixed, the community fixed it together with you and other people stepped up uh, uh, to, to improve that training. And what you now see is that uh, at the yearly conference, people put a lot of love and energy into those trainings. It's not only the physical or the virtual training, but also the documentation and the training materials that form a kind of part of the documentation. And every year when Plone uh, uh, has some evolution, it gets reflected in the training, the material is updated, and we, we have a kind of living documentation spring of, uh, uh, of, of these trainings. So they, are, they have become a vital part of, of learning Plone and using Plone uh, uh, for, for the community. That is true. And since last year, also uh, since the last year, the conference was also virtual. We recorded all trainings, and they're on YouTube. And the videos are pretty successful. So the uh, mastering clone video has, I don't know, a ton of views, which is weird. But yeah. um, it may be really, really helpful. And we're going to record all the trainings this year again. And so there's going to be updated new versions, and the new trainings obviously get their own uh, videos on YouTube. Yeah. So that's 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 the blown conf. Uh, uh, we are going to discuss the talks we're going to do, and we're going to uh, to pick some talks we're looking we're really looking forward to. But first, uh, in our first episode, we talked about plug. Uh, the original plan was to have an autium plug and to put it one or two weeks before the conference. Uh, since our first episode, that part that plan changed. What's now going to happen is that uh, a brave group of uh, people are going to travel to Sorrento a few days before the conference starts. We're going there to, uh, for a, a kind of both sprint uh, and because the conference is only four hours, we've got this, this schedule in our heads that we're going to, to sprint and talk together and work on Plone uh, in the mornings and the afternoons. And then we're going to collectively uh, uh, hog down the Wi-Fi uh, uh, of our uh, beautiful uh, uh, location in Sorrento in the evening to sit together and watch the Plone and participate in the Plone conference virtually. So that's uh, what Plog will be uh, this year. It will be a kind of uh, in real life uh, gathering for the people who are allowed due to all the regulations, of course, and the limitations they're still on travel. Uh, we'll go to Sorrento uh, uh, and, and sprint, work together, and, and uh, discuss Plone there as well. Yeah, I think uh, more than 20 people signed up, so it's going to be a um, decent crowd. I'm not coming this year, sadly. I'm, I don't know. Wanderlust just uh, didn't, didn't apply to me this year for some reason. Uh, but um, I can see the appeal of uh, public viewing of a Plone conference. That sounds really, really tempting. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it will be, and it will be good. To, like you said, the last really uh, in place uh, meeting was like 2019, so we're, people are really longing for it. Yeah. Philip, I'm still sh which I'm talks? Still shy. You're st yeah, uh, that's yeah, that's imposter syndrome and another host of, of issues uh, that are, are like the human the human condition or yeah. le, uh, le, how do you call it in French le, uh, la condition humaine. Mm. So that's that, that's always something. But talking about shy, which talks are you going to do, Philip? Uh, aside from the mastering clone training that I'm going to give with uh, Katya Seuss together, I'm giving two talks. One on my uh, favorite topic, export import, in recent times favorite at least. So I'm doing uh, A New Hope for Migrations, I think that's the title. And uh, so that, um, that package uh, got a lot of attention and use in the last, uh, since it was uh, created in spring this year. And um, yeah, I'm using it to migrate the shit out of every plone site that I can get my hands on at the moment. Uh, what are you going to do? Yeah, so uh, I, I, so of course, me and my Mar uh, colleague Maurits talked about, okay, uh, PlumConf, what are going to present? And normally Maurits is always occupied as a release manager with some kind of uh, keynote or getting part of the keynote to present the state of uh, Plum together with Eric or, or with, with other people. Uh, uh, but that uh, topic was down. Uh, uh, so he, he didn't have to do that this time. So I, uh, we discussed it, and he is now going to do a very cool thingy uh, we've been working on at CEST uh, for the last half year for a customer which is called autom which is automatic focal point detection. So I'm not going to mow all the things away, but we've, we had this, this use case with a customer where they have like 5,000 images and half of those images uh, uh, are in portrait mode where the interesting part of the, Im if, of, of the picture is either at the top or the bottom. 
and you and they also want to use that as a product uh, representation database. So we kind of and and it it was actually well. Of course, Maurits spent a few days on it, and he will discuss a lot of it. But it was it was easier than I initially thought. So I, I had another topic. I had I didn't have a topic then, and I thought, okay, uh, you're, you're uh, very enthusiastic about export uh, export import uh, collective export import. I'm as well because I did some very nice. Uh, I did a very nice migration, uh, which went almost flawlessly. I got a compliment from the customer the other week that they did, still didn't get any, any big issue reports uh, when using this migration. So I'm going to, to uh, uh, latch on to your talk about export-import and then present a, an, another special extra use case we found for export-import. So that will be my contribution this year, uh, this year. And for the rest, I'll be going to Sorrento and help people and try to soak up as much information about Plum 6 as I can. Yeah, cool. So I, I have a second talk that is uh, about relations. Uh, so uh, last year I gave a lightning talk, Why Relations Are Weird, that was the title. And uh, this year it is uh, Why Relations Are Great, because uh, between weird and great we did two sprints and fixed a lot of stuff. And there is uh, there are exciting new opportunities um, for developers to work with relations in Plona. And I'm going to discuss and showcase all that, all of that. So well, that's I've, my second talk. I've been working with Plone since like two, not to break to 2002 and 2003, and I still don't get relations like 100%. <laughs> I joined you uh, in, the, in the relations sprint this, uh, this February, March, uh, 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 organized by, by Descarta. Sally uh, 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 bootstrapped that part and got some people together like, can we fix and improve relations? And we, we, we joined it, and it's still, I, I, I'm there now, I think 80 or 90 percent of the way, but we still, it's uh, relations in Plone are, are, are the icing on the cake, but they're also the, the trouble one. So, um, Philip, uh, to, to, to finish this block off, what are we looking most forward to, to other talks that we see now on the schedule? What are your I'm, favorites? I'm really excited about the talk you just talked about, uh, the one by Moritz about focal point uh, detection. Uh, I think there was a focal point editor in Castle, or there is one in Castle CMS, uh, where you can manually pick one, but the automatic photo focal point detection, that is exciting. Looking forward to that. And there is an interesting, uh, my, my back-end developer heart is burning for that, uh, a talk by Michael Madfadden about clone output filters which and portal transforms, which are so crazy uh, when you debug uh, issues that are going on in, in, in portal transforms. So I'm very much looking forward to that one. And uh, the third one I'm looking forward to, uh, it's many more, obviously, but the third one that I'm looking forward to is a talk by uh, Hannes Ragam about uh, TipTap, an editor um, that has a patterns, uh, pattern integration. There's, uh, there seems to be an add-on collective TipTap uh, that will be uh, released or is already released uh, where you can uh, replace TinyMCE with the TipTap editor, which is an exciting new option for Plone. Yeah, let's talk a bit more about patterns uh, in, the, in our next block uh, about the plone development status because there's some interesting news about, uh, about patterns as well. So my, quickly, my favorites to, to, uh, uh, to, to conclude this part. Um, uh, of course, uh, uh, Ramon Navarro Bosch is always boggling my mind with something when it's on the AI, machine learning or other. So he's going to do something about Flaps and FlapsDB, which is a project he has been working on with his company for the last one, two, three years probably. That's always interesting. Uh, Tiberio Ichim is doing like three or four talks about uh, things that all tick my, like my, my yes, should no, should no, should no things about, about Volto. Um, and another uh, favorite I'm looking forward to is the Young Talents talk uh, by Christine Baumgartner, Jens Klein, about the IT on board project. They uh, started in Ferrara already, and they're presenting uh, uh, some, uh, uh, some results now from their project they've been doing uh, with some sub, uh, subsidy, uh, uh, subsidized money from the European Union to bring uh, young people in contact with IT companies in Europe. And uh, one of the uh, efforts Christine has been working on is creating a guideline for IT companies on how to uh, 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 yeah, be, be more uh, inviting for young people that are still in school that have to look for, for a job and, and to present the IT job, uh, to present the IT uh, profession to them. So that will be my favorites. So that, was, that is, that's going to be a PlonConf, that's going to be PLOG, that's going to be trainings, talks, open spaces, and a lot of fun. Yeah, and it's cheap. You should go. You can still <laughs> register. It's, it's my, not expensive. I mean, if you compare it to other IT conferences, 
uh, professional ones that is that are so so expensive. But this uh, it has a very high quality, great ex a great community. Um, if you don't get a ticket, it's I don't know. Yeah, talk about stereotypes. That should you? be it should be my line. I'm Dutch. I, so my second one was was Arnhem. I was really like you know, go Budapest or or the Arn the Barnham uh, uh, conference. So. That's PlonConf. We're looking really forward to it. Uh, but while uh, 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 PlonConf is, is on the horizon, there's a lot of work being done on Plone development. Plone 6 is around the corner. We're not there yet. We really want to finish Plone uh, uh, before the conference, like every year. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to make it. Everybody's working very hard on it. Philip, what has been happening with Plone development lately? Yeah, so there were uh, there were three main blockers that were identified, and one was the dexterity site route. So the Plone site itself was uh, still a CMF type content object, and uh, thanks to the work of um, your uh, Dutch uh, yeah, Rule Rule Brooking has spent a lot of time on this, and that yeah. is finally merged. So uh, the uh, Plone six demo sites are using dexterity as a site route. A uh, couple of site issues popped up, but they got fixed uh, pretty quickly as far as I saw. A second one is the Plone, uh, the Volto integration in Plone. So there's a new package called Plone.Volto. Uh, that is very much in progress. It, it's nearing finishing status, I'd say. Um, and the third one is uh, Classic Plone, and that has basically two parts. Mo one is the design overhaul based on Bootstrap, and a uh, more under the hoods part is uh, the changing of the whole JavaScript story in Classic Plone because everything was um, um, updated to uh, ES6. And uh, Barceloneta is now, uh, has been released a couple of days ago as a NPM package. Uh, the first alpha release was uh, just happened. So uh, can you talk, uh, can you tell us what, what's your take on that? What's yes, important Yes, I, I, uh, while I was on vacation, I, I did have some Wi-Fi at the apartment. So I joined uh, the, uh, the ES6 print uh, uh, one day uh, to, to yeah, let's on a bit, see what's going on there. So I, I'm, 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 I'm a bit of uh, uh, doing everything uh, uh, for a bit. So I'm, I'm not too, too keen on knowledgeable on, on JavaScript, but I, I, of course I have to when, when issues pop up. So the, the, the interesting part of Plone has always had this uncanny, uh, 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 the Plone community has always had this, this, this knack for uh, uh, developing their own frameworks a bit ahead of time uh, before then somebody else did the final version and we, we were like, uh, oh, we should have uh, switched to jQuery. Oh, we should have switched to React. Oh, we should have switched to this. So we've had like KSS in the past. Uh, uh, we've had our, our registries and other things. But the interesting part we always had in, in Plone was this decoupling of the JavaScript from uh, the page layout. And this was in our previous block, uh, the patterns. So since Plone 5, whenever there's something interactive on your, on your web page, uh, you can, uh, it's kind of decoupled from the real JavaScript using a pattern. So you say, for example, oh, there, here's a form with a date uh, field on it. And then you say uh, data pattern is for a date picker or something other name and then when your page loads the HTML it loads the form then afterwards a small part of JavaScript is scanning the page sees oh but on this element there should be an interactive element and it swaps out and loads a pattern instead of that part and that's that's uh, 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 that's pattern slip for a part and also Plone also has a uh, package called mockup in which also these patterns are so this is the the, the, the split in two which you uh, just referred to there's the bootstrap styling update which is going to land in Plone 6 with finally bootstrap 5 actually 5.1 so we're going to uh, also going to the grid backend implementation of, of Bootstrap 5.1. And the other part is updating the whole uh, patterns machinery, which lives in, in, in the mockup package uh, in our Plone uh, uh, GitHub uh, uh, organization. And that's basically the, the, me the mechanism I just explained. And it was, it, we used to use RequireJS for that, and we're now going to move that to, uh, or is being moved to Webpack, uh, 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 and and also ES6 and ES oh, sorry ES6 ES6 modules. 
So it's all modern JavaScript. Uh, and I think we're now almost like 95% back in line with how many other uh, uh, front ends are also developed. Like Volto is also using Webpack under the hood, for example. It's, yep. the, it's the go-to way you develop locally, uh, uh, you run a kind of builder, uh, bundler, uh, compressor, whatever. It makes your JavaScript project locally into a nice bundle for uh, consumption in the web browser. And Plone 6 is going to, uh, Plone 6 Classic is going to uh, do that exactly in that way. And by the way, Volto is also going to do that. Volto has also always also used that Webpack part. So that's ES6. There was a sprint in September. Uh, most of the patterns have been updated uh, to use modern JavaScript. There's modern asynchronous stuff in there. Testing has been updated. I think it's not finished yet, but there is, uh, 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 you, you can actually test that uh, at the moment. Yeah, I was quickly part of the, uh, shortly part of that sprint and I tested it uh, just to see what's the state uh, here, uh, but I haven't uh, done any work there. But I'm excited that it's nearing, uh, nearing completion and that the, uh, that classic clone has a updated and modern JavaScript uh, story that is really, really, uh, has been a requirement for so long, but, uh, was, so, was hard to of, find the time. One of the side effects or benefit, real benefits for end users is that we're going to use the latest and greatest Tiny MCE. So Tiny MCE is in Plone 5.2 still has Tiny MCE for something. Yeah. Tiny MCE also upgraded, uh, updated their uh, uh, their whole uh, library to modern ES, ES uh, modules, and now we're going to be able to just use the latest uh, uh, and greatest Tiny MCE version. So that's that's a real tangible benefit uh, to have that support because it all, all also supports the latest browsers, which is now getting a bit tricky already with Tiny MCE4. Yeah. Um, alphas, do we have alphas yet? We have a pre-alpha, whatever that is, uh, but it's, it is uh, released not on PyPy, but as an egg on the Displone org, and uh, Maurits has uh, put out an email uh, explaining how to test and install that. Um, so that is uh, probably the base for uh, that we're going to use for the trainings. Is if there's going to be a another alpha or I don't know pre alpha two or alpha one before the conference is not really certain because time is tight, and uh, so the the problem might be that if we are committing changes a couple of hours before the conference or the training start. Uh, yeah, we should not do that. People might get really, really angry. So um, I'm, I'm not sure about that. I'd love to have see that happen, but uh, if I don't know, looking at the development state, it looks really good. I say, I say, uh, and I think all parts are looking yeah, good. Yeah, so so a bit short. So why, well, we got a pre-alpha now is because uh, as soon as you with a project, uh, open source project, you announce an alpha, then the whole most of the functionality should should be in there. And we're still uh, working on integrating the Volto front end and the classic front end as both packages you can choose. And that was not there. So uh, uh, people asked, okay, can you make a pre-alpha at least, which has already most of the functionality of the classic one. Uh, what you just said, the, the modernization of the ES6 uh, uh, is uh, not pattern stuff is, is not in pre-alpha 1. So I, I would hope for a pre-alpha 2 where at least also the, uh, uh, um, the updated patterns are there. So when, if you now install pre-alpha 1 and you do a classic Plone 6 uh, front end, you will get the updated Bootstrap 5.1 and Boston Letter LTS, but you will still be using the, the pattern code from Plone 5.2. And that's, again, the decoupling, which is very cool. So you can just now, it, it's, it's a gradual thing. You can do so hopefully another pre-alpha too and yeah let's hope that we can get a, 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 a real alpha out before plone conf and otherwise it will be a bit afterwards i don't yeah. think it's a real it, it would be nice to have but uh, plone has always been about evolution and not revolution yeah and it's a it's a duocracy so stuff gets finished when it's done um, so Philip, that's, I think, Plone development status, which will be a lot of work, uh, at least for the next two weeks, uh, next to the training stuff and preparing talks and other stuff. Do we have some other news and fun facts? I think we do, because... Yeah, Plone party. just got 20, actually. Uh, a couple of days ago, uh, the uh, release, first public release of, uh, I don't know, 0 0.1 of Plone, um, reaches 20 its 20th anniversary so there's going to be probably a party and a cake at the conference not sure what the organizers are planning there but um 
in the US, we're going, we're going to be of drinking age next year. It hasn't stopped us from drinking for the last 20 years, but um, okay. I was going to shout out we're grown-ups now, but that's not really true because there, there are these, these, these still discussion between 18 and 21, and we already uh, became 18 a few years ago. Yeah. I remember the big cake in Boston, which was like 2016, so that was like five years ago. Then we became 15, still a bragging uh, teenager at the time. Yeah, deep in puberty. So... So we have a follow-up, yeah, from the la the last uh, um, episode, the first episode actually, uh, we presented the search block for Volto and tada, it happened, it has been merged, it's part of uh, Volto 14, uh, it's been merged since the Alpha 13, they have a lot of Alphas in Volto for yet every release. Uh, congratulations to Tiberio and to everyone else who was working on that. It's a really excellent uh, addition to the Volto uh, blocks. And it, as we showed last time, it gives you so much power out of the box where you used to uh, be, require uh, EEA facet identification or other add-ons in the past. It's just built in now in Plone Volto. That is really, really, really good. Yeah, so let's uh, uh, let's talk about plone add-ons. It's um, we we're always told, so we are always bragging. We we're talking about collective export import, which we're working a lot of uh, on together now. But you mentioned another uh, uh, add-on you've been using recently, uh, which I also I have this this light version always of of this add-on, uh, which was called collective classifiers. But you've been using collective taxonomy lately. Yeah, I've been using it in a, a lot of projects. I want to show show it off a bit. Uh, it's really nice. It uh, allows you to organize. Uh, taxonomies, uh, and it's as often in Plone, it is more powerful, it has more power than you usually need. Uh, but I'm going to show a couple of the core features sharing my screen here. Yeah, so basically, a taxonomy is a kind of a tree uh, structured uh, list of tags, and the advantage of having a, a structure there instead of just separate lo loose flying around tags or keywords is that you can say, for example, we've got a main theme and we've got a sub theme. So one of my customers has a site which has uh, like a lot of subjects around water. So water is uh, 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 ahead of in the taxonomy. And then the sub part of, of, the, taxon of the, the water taxonomy is like uh, uh, taxes for water or pollution or whatever, whatever. And the beauty with uh, collective taxonomy is that you can make them infinitely deep. Yeah, that's true. Um, I use them for simple, simple lists, and the good, the good thing is that uh, you can translate them, and it's a, it has a generic setup, export and import handler, and uh, so this is a project by the University of Marburg where we're doing the uh, basically study uh, options uh, thingy. And so you have a couple of topics, for example, and you can uh, edit the taxonomy da data here, which is imported automatically, and you can translate that. So here's the English uh, translations of these uh, study subjects, uh, topics that you can st study, and you can just add a new one uh, or edit them. And in the back end, they use a... Um, they use a UID basically for the values, and they uh, each tr uh, taxonomy, each uh, basically as a vocab can look at it as a vocabulary. Um, you can uh, it has its own translation domain, so that's how it uh, it works. That is automatically translated, and we when you use that in a where do you have that here is a study subject for example and when i added that i have these fields where i can pick something uh, and these values come from these taxonomies and when i add something in the taxonomy here a new item let's just add one just add a new new topic uh, and i'm gonna also uh, let's do the German version. This one's the German German new topic, and I save that. Uh, this will automatically uh, show up here when I reload the page as a new option in this uh, list here. In here, German new topic, and in English uh, it's the same. And uh, it also works fine for uh, multilingual fields. So if I uh, try to edit the translation here, uh, for example, for this uh, field, and I add medicine here. Uh, I just 
the English medicine, conflicts, entrepreneurship. So I added the English uh, uh, item in the uh, in the translation field, and I go back to the German one, and I see, then I see uh, that this is already automatically set. So it works with all the uh, yeah all default features of Plone. So here uh, medicine is added, and I can pick a new one. I can delete one. Uh, so it's really nice uh, to to manage your stuff. So they they use it, and this is by by the way, this uses EEA faceted navigation to populate uh, these uh, the search for study subjects. Yeah. So uh, this is the this is the, the, the cool thing about Plone. So, so this is this is just the the, the 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 labeling first. You've got the labeling on the data. Then you can use faceted navigation to lay out them. Or with the uh, photo search block uh, we just talked about, you yeah. can say, okay, on my main page, I create the block search for all news items that are only inside these taxonomy hierarchies and then you can go as deep or as high level generic as you want you can say I don't want news items I want news items about this study subject I want news items about that and it's all reused again exactly so that's a really nice add-on that uh, that we use a lot it uh, there's one downside it doesn't have a management interface in Volto yet you can obviously use it in Volto uh, to edit uh, content and to display the data but uh, the, uh, the 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 back end uh, the, the management interface that I just showed you where you can add new items it, that only exists in classic Plone. Uh, the funny thing is that's actually a React application, same as Volto, but it's just not implemented, in vo in, integrated into Volto yet, uh, which is not terrible because uh, it's usually a job that is should be done by a manager. So uh, having that in only in the back end for admins is is okay at the moment. That, that was that was one of the so we needed we needed a kind of lightweight taxonomy solution seven or eight years ago in a project. And that the issue, one of the issues there was then that taxonomy or another add-on uh, had a kind of broken editor uh, for it. So we just went for our own solution, which was only a two-level deep uh, uh, hierarchy, which we did with dictionaries and some editing stuff, which became uh, collective classifiers. But uh, yeah, nowadays, the problem, we, we never needed the, the multilingual one. And you really want to have, if you are having a multilingual or a larger site, you really want to have uh, um, uh, translation support on your keywords so you can flu uh, uh, flow switch between languages and still have the same tag on that so yeah it's it's taxonomy is now a really cool one uh, 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 and I don't think it will be a huge effort to get something uh, nicely as an editor into Volto uh, with uh, with all the modern support for react components uh, yeah. in Volto. it's already written in react it's just someone needs to do the work to, yeah. to inc include that somewhere yeah. So interestingly, Philip and I are, are, have not been working uh, on, on projects together in Insight for one project and that were for our work, but we have been discussing and doing the same things uh, uh, over and over again at the same time. Uh, we, we, and we noticed that again in preparing this, uh, 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 the second episode. So collective cover, I've been using it for, uh, uh, at, at, at a customer called FAMM in, in, in Belgium, a government agency. And you've got some great news for me because collective cover will be migrated to Plone 5 to and also Python 3 support will be added. Enlighten yeah, um, me. That's great. That is true. Well, Kleber uh, Santos, a Brazilian uh, Plone developer, uh, I think he's Brazilian, I hope. Um, <laughs> hope we'll hope ask. I'm not doing we'll him ask. injustice. Uh, he took on the work for, I don't know, probably a client to migrate it to, uh, update it to Plone 5.2, and that's already done, so it's working in Plone 5.2. And uh, there are just a tiny th a, a couple of things that are missing to uh, get it working in Python 3, a dependency that needs to be fixed. So this will happen, which means that in classic clone, we will have, uh, again, two options for composite pages. Uh, one is mosaic and the other is collective cover. We're certainly not going into details at the moment. There have a bit different user experiences, but the basic concept is very similar. They store the data in tiles, uh, and the editor can, uh, can, agree, uh, can create uh, rows and columns uh, and cr uh, add tiles uh, to, to a page. Um, which was a big thing, or still kind of is a big, big thing. Uh, 
in Volto. Obviously, that's a core feature of the uh, Volto editor. Uh, so we don't need an add-on in Volto. You just use Volto and you have something similar, uh, mostly in a... Uh, vertical uh, line, which is uh, a, the default constraint there, but makes sense if, if you look at it as an editor. Uh, but for Classic Plone, these two very important add-ons, uh, add uh, Mosaic and Collective Cover, will be available in Plone 6. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not enthusiastic about it because I want to change all my products to Collective Cover because no. uh, Volto is really, the, the I think, the, the, the better uh, future front-end solution if you really want to com uh, work with components. But we've got a lot of existing projects on Plone 4, and some of them have been using Mosaic, some of them have been Cover. We've had a, 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 a nice, we've collected a nice collection of composite page tools in, in Plone over the years. And for some larger projects, when you want to migrate them and it's too early to go to Volto, or you're, we're already working on a migration to some classic thing in Plone 5.2, for example, I mean, not every pro Plone project is going to move to Plone 6 uh, in the next two months. There's still projects also which I started like two years ago or one and a half years ago that go to Plone 5.2. And then having still having Collective Cover there, uh, now also supported in Python 3, is great. Yeah, um, we, we've both been working on migrating these sites. So both of us yesterday wrote code to export. Uh, Fred, you wrote code to export Mosaic. Um, uh, not mosaic. Yeah, uh, yeah mosaic. Yeah, mosaic uh, layouts, tiles, exactly. Yeah. Uh, with export import, I've been I wrote code to export collective cover tiles with export import. Uh, still working on the import part, but that should be doable. So uh, doesn't need a in place uh, migration for that uh, project. I'm excited about that at least. I will do something. So I will present my use case at the conference after after your talk uh, uh, somewhere. You are going to do the, the big main introductory talk of, of export import, and there there's a lot of nice small challenges there. Like maybe we can even, if we if we have the basic conversion working from cover to cover and mosaic to mosaic, maybe because there are a lot of similarities, we could even try to move uh, uh, covers to mosaic or move covers to photo blocks. Which is more, even more interesting. There is, uh, there is a new package uh, that was released, uh, I think, the day before yesterday or yesterday yeah, by Erico, uh, Erico yeah. uh, that moves uh, Volto blocks to Slate. Uh, um, yeah, so what the, are these two editors? Tell us about. Yeah, that. so so uh, uh, like like it's it's the, the one of they always joke about the most difficult problems in IT. I think one of the most difficult problems nowadays when you look at JavaScript and front ends is picking the right package or component for your project that won't uh, 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 be a misfit in one, two, or three years. Um, I don't think it's, it's – I'm not too deep into that, but Volto picked the, the, the nicest, best editor when they started uh, at the time. The component was called Draft.js, which was created by Facebook, I think. Uh, and then while some uh, new projects were started with Volto, the people from Oda Web uh, uh, took, looked at an alternative and they started experimenting with Slate. And the next main Volto release will also switch from Draft.js to Slate. Uh, and it's been, it it's, uh, has already been very easy to just load Volto with the Slate editor instead of the Draft.js editor. Uh, I don't go, will go into the details because I really don't know them. Maybe Tiberio or others will present those at, at the conference as well. I think he has a talk on Slate, on why. So listen to his talk on, on why the change, but we're going to, to switch to Slate. Uh, and of course, we will need to, to have a conversion tool from the rich text text fields in uh, a classic plone to Volto blocks if you want to migrate. That's one of the two or three big issues uh, when you migrate from classic to Volto. Uh, so there's some really nice work that done by Eric, Erico now, uh, which allows you to move uh, rich text to the Slate backend structure. And I should also mention that there was already conversion written by the people from, I think, Red Turtle and other uh, yeah, I uh, think. another company in Italy, if, uh, which they presented at Ferrara already in 2019, which had conversion from rich text to um, uh, to then the draft JS. So yeah, export. Yeah, we're we're, standards, we're, breeding, we're breeding export. We're breeding export import uh, 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 for our, our daily uh, jobs. I think. <laughs> Definitely. So, quick, uh, very quickly, I want to plug one, and then I think we have to wrap up, Philip, because we, yep. we kind of promised to have a, a half an hour. Uh, our first episode we ever took as a test was over one hour, and I think we're now barely going to hit the 45 minutes mark. Uh, one interesting add-on, uh, which I fixed this month, is the HCAPTCHA support for Set3C form and also for EasyForm. So, what's uh, HCAPTCHA? 
Yeah, it's, it's a re-implementation uh, by a very smart company of reCAPTCHA. reCAPTCHA is the go-to tool uh, uh, for, for pr protecting your forms against spammers. There's one huge issue, though, with reCAPTCHA, and that, that it's not GDPR compliant. So if you want to use it in a site in the European Union, if you add reCAPTCHA, you have to agree with uh, Google's terms and services, and they're really not, still not GDPR compliant, because in, in the small letters, Google says, like, we can do anything on a page where you install reCAPTCHA. To put it bluntly, it will probably be, be more gray area. But so HCAPTCHA support has an AP, API which is which matches uh, uh, reCAPTCHA uh, almost one to one. Another community member, I only know his nickname, Andre Asma, uh, 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 took the reCAPTCHA plugin, the Z3C form reCAPTCHA plugin, uh, moved it to HCAPTCHA. I added easy form support last month, which still has to be in a final release, and I fixed a small bug because it didn't. The, the 1.0 version doesn't do the site verify part. So what happens is, if you load it in in your, if you load the 1.0 version of HCAPTCHA now in your site, it does show everything nice in the front end, but when you I always wondered how do they do that. So what happens is you uh, pick the right trucks or the right motorcycles or the right uh, yellow school buses, uh, um, and then you get a gray mark. You s uh, uh, sorry, a green mark. You're a human. You're not a computer. You s submit send. How does the back end know? What happens is that when you complete the task in the front end, you do a query to reCAPTCHA or or edge captcha, You get a unique key. The unique key gets submitted to the backend, and then your server does a quick site verify uh, query back to the reCAPTCHA service to say, look, I've got this unique key. Was that a really completed uh, a task uh, in the last two or two five minutes? And then the site verify says, yeah, that was something that was that was correct. And then you can then thou shall pass. Okay, cool. So that works now, and it's a real boom for 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 spamming support, and also for easy forms. So that's that's my uh, my favorite uh, 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 bragging <laughs> thingy Excellent. I did. Uh, but it, uh, most of the work was already done. I just did some bug fixes, and I, I copied uh, the code in easy form to also support edge capture. Talking about forms, um, we have a form on uh, plone.org slash newsroom where you can uh, se um, send us suggestions, uh, also spam, by the way, because it's not spam protected <laughs> and we're getting uh, lots of spam. I'll ask the marketing team fun. there. The <laughs> HCAPTCHA is working now. We should protect our own form. Uh. I think plone.org is still using plone form gen, so that's not easy form. But there is a talk about redoing plone.org. Uh, plone um, by Rico Pekka, I think, and so that's exciting uh, to see a relaunch of Plone Org. Uh, I guess with Volto, I hope so, at least. Um, who knows? Forward to that talk. Yeah, yeah. who knows? So, so let's wrap up. Wrap, wrap up. So see you later. See you later at our Plone Conf. Uh, see you later in Sorrento. See you later somewhere online or maybe physical again at a sprint or at another meeting. Uh, yes. This was episode two. Philip, thank you so very much for, for starting this. Thanks, final, friend. Final words to you. Um, nothing to say. Uh, enjoy PlonConf and uh, see you or hear you next month. Thanks for tuning in and uh, be safe. Stay safe, stay well, have a great life. Yeah. Bye. See you. Bye.